Hey, welcome back. It's Dawn again out in the garage again, and it's a Friday night again. So this weekend, uh, I do have some stuff planned that should be kind of interesting to watch. I did get some parts here, so I'll walk you through that in a little bit. But right now, I've got a little bit of a construction project going on over my shoulder here. Samantha's working over some of her furniture, doing some new doors and painting and all that kind of thing. And we have a plan on Sunday, right here where I'm standing, we're gonna back her little bright shiny red Mini Cooper in here. And we're gonna do new rear disc brakes on that thing. So in the mix with all of that, I hope to get a little bit of work done on that Jeep too. I should be getting kind of close to getting the tub in transit if the guys were really precise on their estimation of when it's supposed to get that. And uh, tires and wheels should be showing up maybe next week. So I'm gonna set you down for a little bit. I'm gonna do a little garage house cleaning and then um, we'll be all ready to start kind of line these projects out for the weekend. So come on along, I'm sure it's gonna be fun. It's probably gonna be messy, but that's half the fun, right? part happens every once in a while when you get to open up a bunch of parts boxes and see what you got. So I mentioned I think in the last episode that I'd ordered a bunch of stuff and nothing got here. So this weekend stuff has started to show up so I got me some braided steel stainless steel braided brake lines. This is the one that goes from on the back side kind of from where the hard line comes down goes down the rear differential. So I got that. I got me some longer, although they don't look all that much longer to me now, but I'm sure they will once they're out of the package. Some stainless braided stainless steel front brake lines. Again, these go from my fixed steel, you know, rigid lines down to the actual brake caliper. So that'll extend those. So as your wheel travel gets big, you got a little extra brake line there to keep from sacrificing a brake hose. I got this differential breather kit. Now, I don't know if you remember, but when I was taking those differentials off the first time around, I had kind of done my own Mickey Mouse kind of extended breather lines where I ran some tubing from the breathers on the axles up around leaf springs, and I was trying to get them up higher because my goal was, and, and I've known this, and I someday I can tell you the story of my old 78, 80, I had an old Chevy pickup that um, was new when I had it, and I went through a flooded road up in Montana on the way out to the folks' place. It wasn't like a flash flood, but it was the river had come up and flooded the road. 
and I wound up driving in deep water and you know when your differential gets warm the air in there is expanded the, the oil's hot and suddenly you dunk that thing in an icy cold river everything contracts and you, you can actually suck water back in through your breeze, breather tube so I had done that on that old Chevy pickup and I believe at the time, and this was about a thousand years ago, it cost me like $800 to have that rear end gone through because I ruined all the bearings in there because I got water in the oil and I didn't know it. So I've always kind of had this, you know, past history of flooding differentials. So what this is, is ARB makes this kit to let you take your differentials and anything else that has a vent like that. I think you can get up to four of them in here and mount them up top and then they've got this kind of little filter breather thing to let them breathe so that the air can go in and out as it expands and contracts but you can get it up out of the way of the water. So that's what we're going to do with that. And um, a brake line T which I may not have needed because I may have come with that brake line. So anyway that's what's in that box. Brakes and breather stuff. And um, behind me here in this tall box now this is the front axle anti-sway bar. This CJ5 has never had a sway bar on it since day one. A lot of guys used to just take those off and throw them in the junk because they wanted maximum articulation of the front axle without the sway bar getting in the way. And while that's all well and good for crawling on rocks and stuff, it makes them a nightmare to drive on the road because you've lost all your anti-sway characteristics and you're just counting on the strength of your leaf springs. And trust me, you go around a corner thing leans over and you feel like you're going to fall out. So I bought one of these new. This should be the entire thing to replace that new. I do have bushings for it from the energy suspensions as part of that bushing kit. So we'll take a look at that in a little bit. And then here in this big box, I got the rest of the stuff that I ordered from Quadratech. So let's run through here real quick and see what we got. Um, we have three breather hoses for the gas tank. I'm not sure why we have three. I'll have to see about returning two of those. Somehow maybe I had too many things in my silly uh, shopping cart when I checked out there, but I only needed one of those. So that goes on the filler part of the gas tank. This is the breather, let the air out while your gas is going in. And then this hose is the main filler hose. And over there in the box, I've got the actual part that hooks into this that bolts to the back of the tub. So this is my fuel filler system. And then I've got some of like leaf springs uh, bolts. So let's pop this box open and see what we got here. Yeah, so there's new U-bolts. I think I mentioned that I've got everything bolted up with the old bolts that are 25 years old, so I'm putting new bolts on stuff. So there's the probably the rear end bolts. And let's see what we got up here. More bolts, new bolts. Hopefully these boxes are not all new bolts. I seem to have maybe had a little trouble <laughs> with the shopping cart. But now everything else looks like it's a one one, so we should be okay. <clears throat> so in this box, oh, these are my greasable leaf spring bolts. These actually are going to go right there, so you won't be able to see that very well from here. But I've got a bolt with a hole in the end for a greaser. And then it's drilled down through to this hole. Fits inside of that sleeve. You pump the grease in, keeps your bushings nicely lubed and so everything moves real well. So um, that's what those are. Another heavy box here. Ah, I know what these are. These are those skid plates I've been trying to explain to you. So here we go, there's that skid plate concept. So um, this, so you got your four 
regular size holes for your U-bolts here. This is the pin hole that goes where your pin on your leaf springs goes through. But then as you look at this, you got the two layers and you got these bigger holes in here. So your bolt comes through here. Let's see if I can get one through. Kind of like that, only not so far down. Then you put your nut on here, but your nut winds up being up here in this cavity. So again, if you hit a rock, you're gonna slide across that rock on this bottom part of the plate and your bolts are gonna be coming up from here. So your, your nut and the bottom end of your U-bolt is protected by this little genius little thing here. I don't know why they don't just do that on all of them. And then you've got your holes here for your bolt to put your shock mount in and your bolt to put your stabilizer bar in. So that's what those are. Oh, there's that kit. Glad to see those showed up. I think that that's the front axle set. The back axle set I had to buy from four wheel parts or somebody like that because it was out of stock everywhere else and then it didn't get here or it's a little slow shipping. So that'll be here later. So I'll do the front end this weekend probably and have to wait on the back end. So then in this stapled up box here, let's see what we got here. This is a whole box full of paper. Now actually what we've got here is the massive heavy duty power steering gearbox mount system. So if you recall, when I was working on that power steering taking it off of there, I said that it doesn't really it, it's made of like three plates of pressed steel, just stamped steel. And I had put an extra stabilizer from the passenger side spring hanger across to try to keep the bottom of that power steering box from flexing because you can see it flexing when you're out there and you're putting a lot of torque on it when you're rock crawling and stuff like that. So what this is, is just a new, completely new, power steering mounting plate that's made out of big, looks like about 3 8 inch steel. It's all welded up nice. It's heavy. So it's the kind of thing that when that power steering box is bolted back up to the frame, it's not going to move, I don't think. So that's an upgrade. When we're talking, you know, the resto mod part of this, this would be a modification part where we're just putting an extra heavy duty gearbox mount on there, see if we can keep that front end nice and stable and don't let anything move there. So that's what that is. So that's it for the parts haul for now. Um, a lot of stuff and I got a pile of paper over here so the recycle bin will be about full. And uh, like I said, somehow we had a situation with these breather tubes so I'll see if I can't maybe send a couple of those back because I certainly don't need three. Now I might keep two because if I do the same thing when I'm working on the CJ7, it might be not a bad idea to have a new one for that one. So I might not, lucky I got two Jeeps I'm working on, I'm, I'm maybe only one extra. And those things are, that's a $16 part. So not the end of the world there. So there you have it, there's our parts haul. Um, it's late on a Friday night, we're not really gonna get any of the stuff bolted up tonight, but finally stuff starting to show up. So I've got, some work to do to get all this on. I'm gonna kinda of go through and prioritize what's the most important stuff to get done first because theoretically we should be closing in on the time when our tub's gonna get ready to ship. Um, the last conversation I had with the guys at Willie's Overland was about a week ago and I think he said at that point he was two and a half weeks out. Might even have been a bit longer than that. So. We might be getting close on my tub shipping, and so I definitely want to have the brake lines all sorted out. I need to have the suspension really suspended, again, all bolted up and done. Right now, again, those bolts on those front 
parts of the spring hangers are just smaller bolts that are just pushed through the hole. They don't have a nut on them or anything. So that'll be important. This will get me the front axle completely bolted up for good. I can get my brake lines ready to run to the front calipers. And I ordered from the guys at Eastwood a couple of packets of brake line hold, you know, clamps and so I can screw those down to the sides of the frame. Unfortunately, those didn't get here, so can't really get that done this weekend, but that'll be the next big project for making sure brakes, brake lines and fuel lines are run and tied up nice and tidy while I still have the tub off and it's easy to work on that part. And then the rest of it, the tub can drop on there at any point and we'll start working on drivetrain, engine, transfer case, transmission, and electrical system. So yeah, there we go. Not a bad haul for stuff. Um, doing my part to keep the economy rolling along. <laughs> so let's wrap it up for right now. Um, like I said, it's getting late on a, on a Friday night and I'm not really sure we're gonna get a ton done this weekend because we do have some other stuff going on. Like I said, with Samantha's furniture project here and we gotta get some brakes put on our little mini. But other than that, um, at least we know that even in the evenings next weekend or next week, I can get out here and keep working along on this thing and have it ready to keep it on schedule. So I think I'm in pretty good shape as far as the schedule goes now from starting point to here. I'm, I'm longer than I thought I would be, but it's really okay because the tub's not here yet. So the one thing I was kind of worried about was not having the chassis ready for the tub to sit on when I got here. And I was afraid I was gonna have this side of the garage all full of the box that that thing comes in. But I think I'm still in pretty good shape. It can probably show up when it's ready to show up and I'll have a place to put it on frame and we'll be ready to start making this thing look like a vehicle again. So thanks for watching. That's about it for now. And I'll be back to you sometime when I start putting some of the stuff on that thing. Hey again, it's me. It's Don. I'm out here in the garage. It's Saturday morning about time to get started on this project for the weekend. So one of the things I'm gonna to do today is I am gonna get into that box with the sway bar in there and have a look at that. Um, as you saw when I unboxed all this stuff yesterday, I did get my steel braided brake lines. And in this little package, they don't look very big, but this is the original brake line. And I measured that thing's about 16 inches, I think, or something like that. And so I had pulled, I pulled one of those out and compared it. I think I'll show you at some point the difference, quite a bit longer, four or five, six inches longer, which is just what we needed. I mean, these were okay, except for those times when the axle was really flexed up and then they were getting pretty tight. So those are fine. I was a little bit worried. When I first looked at that package, I was like, that looks little, but it's not, it's all good. So things should be moving along fairly smoothly today as I'm looking out the window the weatherman is saying it's going to be a really nice weekend. Um, so maybe, like I said, we'll get this garage door open behind us and have a little fresh air in here for a while. So I'll set you down, get myself tooled up. I got a little bit of coffee to ingest first before we can really get serious about here, out here. But um, I'll get that process completed and get some tunes rolling and we'll get started for today. Okay, well I got the box open for the stabilizer bar, so I just thought I'd give you a quick shot at what we got here. So, this is the box. Um, got packing stuff. So that's really, there's the stabilizer bar. So this mounts up against the frame and then basically resists the, the twisting forces, so these points here are what connect down to the leaf springs and basically as the Jeep tries to tilt it's trying to flex this bar which is a big heavy stout thing that doesn't want to flex so that's the concept there uh, looks like this is stapled down to the inside of the box and it's stapled closed I've already pulled out about a thousand cardboard staples so uh, hang on one second and we'll get that open Okay, well, I got the little box open that was inside of the big box from Heliwig here. So this is the contents of the littler box with all of our parts here. So we've got a bag of bolts and nuts and washers, uh, some littler bushings. 
these are the parts that go against the frame and the actual bar goes through this bushing. Let's see if I can get that here where I can show you. So it goes through the bushing kind of like that. Uh, not sure why these are so, why there's so much of a gap there, but I think, I think possibly what you have is a couple different options here. Um, got some steel plates here, which honestly at this point I have no idea what the heck those are for. I think these are the bolts that go down to connect and uh, oh, some stickers. So I'm getting a whole drawer full of stickers. Everybody wants to send me stickers when I spend a little money with them. So if it turns out that at the end of the day I can't afford to paint the tub when the Jeep gets here, I'm pretty sure I can just cover it in stickers. So there you have it, um, miscellaneous pieces and parts. These are kind of some angled U-bolts. Um, again, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure what all this is, but I'll figure it out, I'm sure. It does look like here's some um, instructions how to take care of the thing or hook it all up or whatever. So I'll peruse those in a little bit and we'll see what we can do with this thing. I do have the whole set, a new set of hangers over there in the in the um, energy suspension box that I might use instead of these. Um, but we'll see. So that's what it looks like so far with that. Everything else, I've gone through some of the littler boxes and um, like this one up here has those plates and my U-bolts that we'll replace down here. The, again, what my those new brake lines that I got are gonna go from here, basically from my fixed brake line in that fitting right there through this hole and then I've got the little clip that goes on the back that holds the end of the flexible brake line here. It goes down there to the caliper. So you can see that's not a, a huge space, but it gets bigger when the frame's fully flexed and you know we're all the way up there. So that's why I bought those longer brake lines for that. And then um, I believe this is my breather hole for my Dana 30 front end, which is missing the breather. Oh, I know where the breather is. It's over there on the shelf because I took it out of there, but then that will be attached to that differential breather kit. And we'll figure out where that's gonna go up here on probably the firewall somewhere once we get the tub here. So again, I think I mentioned that my brake lines and fuel lines, which I kind of just have sitting here where you can see them not really placed yet. I'm waiting for my box of the little clamps so I can kind of get those clamped in. I may drill a few new holes and tap them, you know, at various places, both there and up along the front to get all those tubes tied down nice and tight. And um, same thing with the breather on the back end. So the back differential, I've got that little fitting right there, I believe is my ARB airline for the air locker. And I think the breather's over here, so uh, we'll sort that out. But there we go. Um, that's how things look so far this morning with not much real work done, just opening up a couple boxes. So I've been through all the boxes, and basically you just kind of have to do that and kind of look at everything, make sure you got everything you need and you know what you're going to do with it, most importantly. And then you just um, kind of start to scope the day out or the project out and figure out where you got, got up, what, where you want to get off to. So... Again, what I'm really trying to stay focused on is getting all the stuff done that will be easy to do now when there's no tub on the Jeep. Before the tub gets here and we get that on there, then we you know, start working on the difficult stuff. So when I do run out of work, that dude over there needs to start being disassembled to some degree because I think I've mentioned what my plan is, is to just buy a short block which is the new block, pistons, crankshaft, all that stuff pre-assembled, cylinder heads and all that are on it. So you take off your external parts, your valve covers, your manifold, your you know, front end pulleys and water pump and all that stuff and bolt them to the new thing. So um, I can start disassembling a fair amount of that if I run out of stuff to do on the tub and if the, or on the frame if the tub isn't really coming when we think it's coming. So. Um, I'm not going to run out of anything to do anytime soon, which is good because 
idle hands of the Devil's Workshop, as they say. We don't want no devils around here. Well, it is Sunday morning, and over my shoulder, you can see that I, when we look over the furniture that's being worked on, I have put the engine hoist around there. So what I've done is I've put the engine hoist on the very front of the frame on the driver's side. I'm just gonna pick it up a little bit and pull the pins out of the back of the leaf springs because I think I showed you I got my greasable pins. And it also looks like the sleeve that goes through the bushings is, is drilled. So I'll have to get those, drive the old one out and the new one in. So that's what I'm gonna work on. So let's see how that goes. Well, it happened, had a little old lady who walks through the neighborhood, called me out today. She came by and saw that the boat is still out there with the tarp on it. And she started it already. Are you gonna get that in the water this year? And I said, probably. And she said, that's what you said last year. <laughs> Damn it. So anyway, <clears throat> here's where we are today. Suspension is all tightened up, front and back. I got my greasable shackles in here. I don't have the grease shirt stuck in the end, but those are in front and back. And we're all back together here. Always does seem like this one side is sticking out a little bit. I don't know what's up with that. But <clears throat> see that how can that be we're in the pin on the shack on the springs so anyway this is what those plates look like got those in place and I got my shocks on there now I know what you're gonna say is those shocks don't look brand new Don they're not but they were new last time this thing was rolling. They had hardly had any miles on them, so I just stuck them back on. So they're, they look a little gnarly on the outside, but they'll be fine. So since I did not get my rear differential plates, about got where I can get today. So probably gonna wrap this up, clean the garage up a little bit, shove everything over the side, and um, clean up a little left uh, leftovers from the cabinet construction process over there and call it a weekend maybe go take that little dude out for a drive maybe i think that's a champion idea so anyway um thanks for watching and i will check in in with you again when the next round of parts lands here that can keep me moving forward so i think that's about it for now